Breaking news on this Monday, October 21st, I'm Jasmine Anderson. A driver is facing charges in connection with a deadly crash that closed part of the LIE. Police say a man on a motorcycle was killed when he drove into the back of a car near exit 57 in Islandia just after 1 o'clock this morning. The driver of the car is now charged with driving while ability impaired. His passenger was taken to the hospital with injuries. All westbound lanes of the expressway were still closed at last check. Court today for the man police say is behind a violent road rage incident in West Babylon. Patrick Laughlin of Babylon is facing assault and criminal mischief charges. Police say Laughlin and another man got out of their cars during an altercation in a parking lot on Route 109 on Saturday. We're told Laughlin got back in his car, rammed the other man's car, then ran the man over. The victim suffered serious injuries. Developing now, an early morning crash involving a motorcycle has closed part of the LIE for hours. Police say they got the call a little after 1 o'clock this morning. At last checked, all westbound lanes of the expressway were closed between exit 58 and 57 in Islandia. Happening today, jury selection begins in the trial of a Long Island Marine veteran charged in a chokehold death on the subway. Daniel Penny, who lived in West Islip, is accused of recklessly causing the death of Jordan Neely on a train in Manhattan last year. The trial is expected to last up to six weeks. If convicted, Penny faces up to 15 years in prison. Only in Newsday, seven current and former LIRR workers are suing the railroad over passenger assaults. The federal lawsuit says the Long Island Railroad didn't do enough to protect the employees who say they were assaulted by passengers. The workers say they suffered injuries, including brain trauma, from passenger altercations. The suit seeks between 2 and $20 million. A spike in red light camera revenue in Nassau. Andrew Anger has a story you'll see only in Newsday. On Nassau County roads, these cameras can get a driver's attention. That's because if they catch you running a red light, you may end up paying big. A hundred and fifty dollar fine. Have you ever gotten a red light ticket? Of course. What do you think about those? Can't stand it. A Newsday investigation has revealed lots of drivers have paid up. In the latest available data from 2022, Nassau County brought in 64 million dollars in red light camera fines. That's a lot of money for the county. It's a lot of money for the county and, and it's certainly more than the county was even anticipating. Newsday reporter Robert Brodsky discovered 2022 was the third highest revenue year for Nassau's red light camera program in its 15 year history. Supporters of the program say the camera fines have a big impact on road safety, making drivers slow down and reducing accidents. It has to be a deterrent that's worthwhile, not just another backdoor tax grab. Democratic legislator Seth Koslow says Nassau's red light camera program is more of a way for the county to make money than it is to encourage safety. A $150 ticket, he says, is $50 for the violation, but includes a $55 public safety fee that goes to the police department and a $45 driver responsibility fee. Even with their unpopular fees, Nassau County's red light cameras aren't going anywhere. State lawmakers have approved their use for another five years. Suffolk, however, did not get state approval yet and are set to shut down at the end of the year. That does not mean that when state lawmakers return to session in, in 2025, that the program could get a sponsor and could get reauthorized. Meantime, Nassau presiding officer Howard Coppell tells Newsday in a statement about the red light violation fees. The goal, as always, is to encourage safer driving. Still, motorist John DeVito says he's had enough. So you're not a fan? No. Uh, is anybody? In Carl Place, Andrew Enger, Newsday TV. Andrew, thank you. Read more about Nassau's red light camera program. Just click get more below the Newsday TV video box on our home page. A property tax hike in Glen Cove. It's part of the mayor's proposed $65 million budget. It would raise property taxes by about 2% in the city. City officials say the hike is needed to plug a projected revenue shortfall caused by a yet to be built condo development. The blue light is officially out at the island's last Kmart. The Bridgehampton store, the last full-size location in the U.S., closed its doors for good yesterday. 
a mini version of the once retail giant remains in Miami, Florida. A massive brick party in a Britwood. This was the two day Long Island and Brick convention this weekend at the Suffolk Federal Credit Union Arena. It was billed as the ultimate Lego fan event. They're planning a parade down the Canyon of Heroes today after the New York Liberty won their first ever WNBA championship. 28 years in the making, the New York Liberty are WNBA champions. You can still feel the energy. The Liberty took down the Minnesota Lynx in overtime at the Barclays Center last night, 67 to 62. And the winner take on game five. It's the first title won by a New York pro basketball team since the Nets in the old ABA in 1976. An amazing season has come to an end with a heartbreaking loss. And now the World Series is set. Los Angeles is alive and they're headed to the World Series. The Dodgers beat the Mets last night, ending the Subway World Series dream. Tim Healy is at Dodger Stadium with where the Mets go from here. And just like that, the Mets season is over. The 2024 Mets fell two wins shy of what would have been their first World Series berth in almost a decade. But instead, it all ended Sunday night at Dodger Stadium, 10-5 against the Dodgers in Game 6 of the National League Championship Series. Afterward, in the clubhouse, there were quite a few tears, a lot of red eyes, but also a sense that they did something this year. This was a club that entered the season as maybe a wild card team, maybe sneaking in into the playoffs, and they did exactly that, and then made the most of it, getting all the way to the National League Championship Series. Afterwards, the tears did yield to laughs and smiles, beers and music helped with that, and it seemed like None of the Mets really were in all that much of a hurry to leave. The season was over, but their time together didn't necessarily have to quite yet. The rest of their lives would be there ready and waiting when they wanted to. Carlos Mendoza, at the end of his first year as Mets manager, addressed the team after their final loss, saying he was proud of them, and they changed the standard, set a new precedent for the Mets as an organization. This is a team that, in its history, spanning more than six decades now, hasn't made the playoffs a whole lot. Now they have, twice in three years. They expect to do this more and more, and with players like Francisco Lindor, Brandon Nimmo, and others coming back in 2025, they think they'll be back. From Dodger Stadium, I'm Tim Healy for Newsday TV. Hopefully, Tim, thank you. After knocking the Guardians out over the weekend, the Yankees will face the Dodgers in the World Series. Game one is Friday night in Los Angeles. Read more about the Yankees on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. More than 60% of the state's top paid public educators outside of New York City work here on Long Island. This top earner is Benjamin Chufo, assistant superintendent of Jericho Schools, with a final compensation package of nearly $600,000. Newsday Education reporter John Hildebrand explains why. Most of it is not salary. He has a, the breakdown is that his salary, his closing salary was $275,000, but uh, in order to recruit him originally, the Jericho district also gave him a, a generous uh, contract because they wanted to hire him very badly. Uh, so they gave him a generous contract and that called, that, that was something that allowed him uh, to cash in a lot of unused sick and vacation days, which is common in educators' uh, contracts. 93 educators in the state earn more than $300,000 or more. 58 of them are in Nassau and Suffolk. The majority of the list are superintendents, teachers, and counselors. Read more about this story on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. LI Votes 2024, Election Day is just 15 days away. Can you believe it? We hosted a debate and one-on-ones with the local candidates running for Congress and Senate. First Congressional District candidates Republican incumbent Nick LaLota and Democratic challenger John Avlon came to our studios in Melville. They sparred over issues including immigration, reproductive rights, and affordability.
Well, we need to get back in the business of building again, but we need to do it so that communities are driving the conversation, that we're preserving open spaces and the historic nature of our communities. One way we can do that is by looking at restoring and reviving the aging stock around strip malls, by creating incentives to build residential on top of commercial, creating pop-up communities that are perfect for starter homes and temporary workers, having good transportation and sewer networks, which is particularly an issue here in Suffolk County. We need a higher salt deduction. We need more first-time home buyer tax credits, and we need a lower income tax credit as well. That's how we can help make homes affordable here on Long Island. We're challenged. We're challenged with the highest tax rates of, of the entire nation here in New York State, the highest effective sales, property, income taxes. Since one party rule in, in Albany in 2018, the price of, of cost of everything has gone up, especially real estate and taxes and everything associated with it. It's the reason so many people are leaving Long Island for what they view to be greener pastures. Watch the debate in all of our one-on-one -on -one interviews streaming right now on Newsday.com. Newsday Sports is brought to you by King O'Rourke Automotive Group. Battling back, a junior goalkeeper is healthy and focused on future after beating cancer. Jolie Katzen has a story you'll see only in Newsday. For Eastport South Manor junior Maeve Geyer, few things in life mean more to her than soccer. I actually started playing soccer when I was three. It was like my passion right off the bat. It's that passion that was able to get her through some of the toughest of times. After breaking her nose in an eighth grade basketball game, what she thought would just be a checkup visit turned out to be the beginning of her battle with cancer. I went for just like a basic checkup just to make sure that my nose was healing. Um, and that day, the doctor was looking at my nose, just kind of checking things out and looked down and there was like a bump on my neck. And he was like, hey, like, have you ever checked this out before? Um, and my parents never noticed it. I didn't even know it was there. After numerous tests, Geyer was still left without answers. Finally, doctors removed half of her thyroid to determine the diagnosis. I actually remember it very vividly. My dad came in, sat in my bed. We were just, you know, it's normal for my dad to come in my room. And my mom came in and they sat down together and I was like, hold on, what's happening here? And they told me that the, you know, results had actually come back and that it was cancer. And but Geyer focused less on the diagnosis and more on how to get back to her routine. Really just what's the next step? Where do we go from here? And how do I get back to soccer quicker? <laughs> I was desperate to get back to it. Geyer was eager to get back on the field because for her, soccer is her therapy. When you come on the field and once you step over that line, like you're in game and performance mode. You're not here to think about the, the problems in your life. Once she found out that she was diagnosed with that, she was her first thing was, when am I gonna be back on that field? She's just a fighter. She's a warrior. If anything, I think this made her tougher, if that's even possible. Cancer free since January 4th, 2024, Geyer says she's grateful for what this has taught her. Dealing with the mental difficulties of the cancer stuff helped and assisted my strength on the field. I'm grateful that I was almost chosen to handle it because it taught me so much. Just a bit about myself and developing the passion for soccer even more. Jolie Katzen, Newsday TV. Read more about this story on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Checking out your hyperlocal Monday forecast, a summer-like throwback day. We'll take it. Here's your day planner. It's warm and sunny out with highs around 74 degrees. It's not going to feel like that early in the morning, so grab a jacket. Now let's move on to the next day. Uh, tomorrow, it's definitely going to be even warmer. Highs around 77 degrees. Looking at your seven-day forecast, lots of sunshine ahead, so get ready for it. That's your forecast. Long Island weather is brought to you by PTRC. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Have a marvelous Monday. Thank you so much for watching.